This is a story about these pliers. I was, I guess, 14 years old, and I had just learned how to make chainmail. You know, the kind that you, you weave and you make armor out of. What I would do is I would work for probably 12 to 18 hours a day on weaving these rings into strands of fabric, and then taking that fabric and weaving that into sculptures. And I would sneak pliers and rings and my project into school and I would work on it underneath the desk. Teachers are not stupid people, and of course they would, they would catch me. Um, I, was, I was 14 years old, I was probably pretty obvious. They would take my pliers, and they would take my rings, and I, would, um, I was a little bit of a smart ass, and what I had done is I had taken a large coat, and I had sewn several pockets on the inside, and each pocket had several pairs of pliers and several pairs of rings. So as they would take these pliers, I would almost always just pull out another set and keep working. I, I would do this so much that my hands would get blisters. They would get tired. And this was a pretty big problem. This, this was my limiting factor that you, you can't work that much or that well when your hands are bleeding. When I was 18 years old, my parents got me a forge and an anvil for my graduation present. And one of the first things I did was to make pliers specifically for chainmail. I, I adapted the jaws, the um, handles, and created something where you wouldn't have your hands bleed and you wouldn't get tired. A couple years later, I started to make jewelry as a professional jeweler. And I started running into the same issues I had with chainmail, that I used the pliers so much that my hands would get tired. And the materials I used were so hard that pliers would often just break in my hand as I was bending the material. This was a really big problem. So I took what I learned from making chainmail pliers and adapted them to make better jewelry making pliers. One of the first things that I did is I made wider handles so you could put more force onto the handle and it would be spread out over a larger part of your hand so it wouldn't dig into your hand and would effectively give you more power at the jaws. I, I started to polish the handles. That way you would have much less friction on your hands. The friction on your hands is what leads to, to blisters, and by having polished handles, that significantly reduced the blisters, and that went along with reducing the fatigue on your hands. I forged the pliers out of alloy steel. By doing that, I made them tougher and more durable. I've been using the same pair for over 15 years. To me, pliers are an extension of my hands. They're an extension of myself. They, they are a mechanism in creativity. They're, they're essential. They, they help tell a story. One day, a friend asked me to make him a pair of pliers, and I did. One of his friends then asked me to make them a pair of pliers, and I did. And this went on for a while that I just started making pliers for people. I've, I've been a professional jeweler for about 10 years now, and jewelry is something that is just what I do. It's part of it, my everyday. I wake up and I, I make jewelry. And helping other people make jewelry and creating these tools that allow other people to express themselves and to communicate their story. This is a really big part of me. I, I love to tell my story, but I also love seeing and experiencing other people's story. I'm honored that so many people have been asking me to be an under part of their story. These pliers are here. They're, they're here to help you tell your story.